Hey everybody, I'm doing a video on these two different spot welders with examples. So this is the Do Create handheld spot welder, or you've got this other one, which is supposedly 8,000 watts. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to spot weld, not only to some cells, but to real nickel on top of nickel in case you're double layering. Now, if you're impatient, spoiler alert, I like this one better. This one I'm gonna be sending back. This one is cheaper. This one costs twice as much. I can't say the numbers because Amazon doesn't like that, so let's get into it, okay? So with this one, you're actually gonna get the spot welding pin. It doesn't look terrible, actually. Uh, it's well constructed okay it's got a little cover they give you some uh sandpaper so if you ever need to sand down the tips okay they give you a little sample baggie of uh stuff around here i don't know where it went but when it pops up i'll show you okay now as far as this one you press this button on top that turns it on and off okay you can either do manual or automatic spot welding so you put it to the uh, nickel tabs it waits a second and then it goes or if you want to press it manually when you think you got it there so you don't have to be rushed you can press the button up here okay so you hold that it's going to turn on boom just like this and then it's got 11 gears is what they're calling it yeah so you can see i've already started like number three but you just press this and then it goes through and then it cycles back and then it starts over okay um, it's recharged. It's re USB rechargeable, which is kind of a nice touch compared to the other one. Um, but this one, and I'm going to show you what it looks like from gear one all the way to 11, what those welds look like. Okay. Um, now on the other one, it looks like this right here. You've got this little box. Everything is attached, which I kind of don't like. So the probes are already attached to it. And then it's got a step pedal, which is actually long enough to go down my workbench to the floor and I can step on it. But it does have more power. So when you turn it on, it turns on like so. And then you can turn the knob from one all the way up to, what was it, nine. Yeah, and I was actually getting some solid welds. And when I pulled some of the welds off of the battery, the nickel tore with it, which is always a nice touch. Okay, so this comes with a little bag of some uh, nickel plated steel. Okay, and then it looks like a little like, um, I don't know if that's actually a sandpaper disc or if it's just like Velcro or something else. It kind of looks like Velcro. No, it feels like light sandpaper. Okay, so with that being said, over here I have a little test. I'm going to show you my little science test. Okay, so this is some of the nickel plated uh, stuff that they come with this. Hold on, let me turn this around. So if you want to test out whether or not your nickel tab is real or not, you score it really hard with a razor blade or maybe some uh, sandpaper and then put it in a salty solution. Okay, so this has been in here for like three or four days. So this is my real nickel tab right here. This is 0.15 thick by 10 millimeters. And this is the one that's provided, which I think is like 0.1 or like somewhere in there. I don't know. Whatever's on the listing, that's true. Um, they're not lying. They're not saying it's not, you know, but that's how you can tell. You can see this right here. So let's get to spot welding. Pro tip, you should always be using ring insulators if possible when you're doing your uh, battery builds, okay? But stop doing this crap right here, okay? If you cut your uh, nickel strip and you have sharp edges and then you put that over the top, okay, of your positive end, that could park, poke through the side right here and cause a short circuit, okay? So round off the edges, kind of like I did right here, at least for the positive side, that way when you put it on top of the anode, I think is what we call the positive side, right? That nothing could ever poke through. Just keep it right to that point, okay? So this is one extra little step. It doesn't take very long, okay? That is the difference between pro versus amateur doing this crap right here, okay? On the bottom, it doesn't matter because the entire cell is negative except for this piece right here. So this would be your failure point by having uh, sharp edges that could potentially poke through. Having said that, I've got this little strip right here, okay? I just tacked it together with this at level six just to hold it. And I'm gonna start working my way down one through 11, and I'm gonna show you what all of the welds look like, okay? So we're gonna start and I'm just gonna work my way down the line. Maybe I'll speed up the video or not. Now, when you come at it, some people, I like to go at an angle of 45. Some people say you need to go straight down. I think it's just totally up to opinion, but here we go. There's one. Looks like nothing, like barely a blemish. Two. Nah. Three. Barely. Four. Five. Getting a little bit more of an indentation each time. Okay. Six. Okay. Seven, and you see a little little burn on the back side because I'm on a cutting board. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'm not letting it rest in between. Um, you probably wouldn't be ripping off this many spot welds one after another after another. These are starting to look better, but the question is, is how well are they actually spot welding through and sticking it to the next piece of um, nickel strip that's below it? Right. Visually, the welds look nice. Look at that. That one was crap. Oh, because it started over. So that was the last one. We'll do one more for good measure. 
Okay. So now let's take a closer look at this and hopefully the camera will focus. We'll see. Okay. You can kind of see it working its way all the way down. And then if I flip it over, okay, you can kind of see that progression from left to right. But the real question is, is, is it spot welded enough together that it won't separate? Okay, so I did this one down here. I feel like I could probably break this one apart, but we'll start. Let's see if we can start on what side. I don't know. Right, you see that? That was just a single weld at seven. And you can see these ones already ripped up. And it just separated like that. Okay, so now let's move over to the bigger one. And just so you can see what this thing looks like before we get started, just in case. Okay, somehow it says the battery voltage is at 8.6, which should really be uh, 8.4. Um, for lithium ions and even if it was lipos it shouldn't be much higher than that unless they're using high voltage lithium uh, lipo bags I don't know if they are or not but you've got your knob wheel here you can turn it from one all the way up to nine which you can see under there it doesn't have notches in each location so it's kind of like you could be somewhere in between that and then I've got the step pedal down there uh, with the plastic still on it okay and then you've got the probes that are permanently attached which I don't like because as you move this stuff like what if it starts to wiggle and come free but overall the probes look fairly decent too and I like these so let's get to it okay so here we go level one and it's nice because this is totally manual you have to use the step pedal once again I'm kind of coming in at a 45 degree angle on both sides there's the first one just like little blemishes like before Okay, probes stick a little bit, not too bad. Three, roughly. Right, like I said, you just gotta turn the knob, it doesn't stick into place. Starting to get somewhere. These ones were four when I, when I spotted it together, okay? A little bit harder there, okay? Six. Now we're getting some power in there. Seven. Okay, you can definitely see the little burn mark there and, and indentation, some melting. Eight. That's a nice little weld right there. Definitely a nice pop. And last but not least, maximum power. Giving her all she's got, Captain. Boom. And you can start to feel the, uh, the the leads here warm up a little bit too. Okay. So let's look at that up close now that we've got that taken care of. Yeah, comparatively, still a little warm in my hand too. So yeah, one through nine. Okay, starting from the left to the right with the two small little itty bitty blemishes there working our way up right you can kind of see what that looks like on the back side but not much of an indicator because there might be some burn mark because of the wood cutting board but then once again what does this look like if i try to separate this and tear the two pieces apart will it come apart as easy as the other one and this is a no this is the indicator i'm actually pulling quite hard with my fingers i cannot do it with just my hands so i'm going to come over here and grab with a pair of pliers. This is when you know you've got a good weld because this should kind of sort of tear, right? Especially when it's on a battery, which it did. So come in. Nope, I got to turn around, right? A little bit of a tear, but I am actually pulling a lot harder. And remember that when you uh, spot weld nickel strip to nickel strip, for some reason it welds slightly different than to a battery. So let me show you what that looks like when I tack this to a battery on, let's say we'll start with level five. Got a fresh piece of strip. I've got some batteries right here. These are some 18650s. They're still alive, but they're pulled out of a, uh, a dead object, but they still work. So I'm gonna tack this to this on level five. And that looks okay. I'm gonna bump it up to level six. I'd like to see a little more power there. Level six. So hopefully you can see that, but those welds, those look pretty good in my opinion. Now the real question is, is what happens when I try to pull this nickel strip off? And mind you, that was just two small sets of quick spot welds right there, okay? So if I try to pull this, will it pull off easily? Actually, no. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually starting to tear, okay? And I don't know if you can see it here, but it actually tore the metal, which is a good sign. And there are metal bits right here. You can actually see this left behind. That was a good spot weld. So if you ever want to reuse this, you'd have to come back and grind it off. I just use a little disc grinder on my Dremel um, to burn those, to pull those off. But that is a good sign. So for 0.15 level five or six with this thing fully charged should make some pretty good spot welds 
to your different cells. So hopefully that little comparison and demo helps. Once again, if you're choosing between the 8,000 watt supposedly, and I believe this is by DoCreate as well, or the DoCreate pen, yeah, get the 8,000 water right here, okay? Uh, it's got the step pedal, it reaches far enough. I don't like that these are connected directly, but hey, it works. This one did not work even in its highest setting for what my needs are, so that's obviously a hard no and a pass. Don't waste your time. Just get this. It's like twice as much, but still affordable. Can't say numbers once again. Um, you're just going to save yourself and you'll be able to do some good smaller batteries. I'm doing FPV stuff, but if you wanted to do a huge battery for like an electric skateboard or an e-bike or something like that, I don't know. I still feel like I would want something that's AC and could plug into the wall and just really push out a ton of welds versus something that's rechargeable. That's me. Hopefully that helps. I'll see you in another video.